In this episode, you will see. Yeah, we're here at the Leibniz Institute for Natural Products Research and Infection Biology. We are looking for natural products. We perform the cultivation of environmental microorganisms inside droplets. Our task is to cultivate these microbes and investigate their antimicrobial activities. Techniques enable simultaneous cultivation of millions of microbes. Hi, it's Lisa from Fluigent. Antibiotic resistance remains a major threat in healthcare and an urgent challenge for infection biology. What allows scientists to find new antibiotics? Why is it important to study the behavior of environmental microorganisms not yet researched? Why has it only recently become possible? And how microfluidics allows to research millions of microbes simultaneously? Today, join me for a visit to the Leibniz Institute for Natural Product Research and Infection Biology here in Vienna, Germany also known as the Hans Knoll Institute. Our heroes today are Miriam, Didi and Sundar, who are looking into natural products to examine their antibiotic potential. Let's go! So we are here at our destination. Now let's go meet Miriam, who will tell us more about the project. Yeah, we're here at the Leibniz Institute for Natural Products Research and Infection Biology. And as the name says, we are looking for natural products. We're looking for small chemical molecules that are produced by microorganisms to communicate with each other or also to fight other microorganisms so they have antibiotic function sometimes. And we look at this in a, in a framework of infection biology, so which microorganisms are infecting hosts, human hosts, which can make you sick and what relevance do these natural products have there. And can we investigate or find new natural products that we can use as antibiotics. I'm directing the biopilot bio plant department and in this department our specialty is microbial cultivation. We culture microorganisms in order to have them produce these natural products and then provide these natural products to other partners and scientists in the institute to investigate these molecules. With microfluidics uh, for the past 10 years, we can really uh, provide a new biotechnological strategy to bring cultivation to the microbial needs, to the scales of microorganisms. So instead of having one big bioreactor, uh, we can now uh, cultivate microorganisms in tiny little compartments using microfluidic technology. So we, instead of one big one, we can have millions of compartments, millions of bioreactors cultivating millions of microorganisms. Okay, that being clear, it's time to see it all in practice. I'm now headed to the lab to talk to Didi and Sundar. work with environmental microorganisms that demonstrate antimicrobial activity towards gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. What we do is we try to cultivate and then isolate them. The microorganisms we encounter in nature are very diverse. These microorganisms possess enormous potential to produce natural products. However, it is only an estimated 1% of microbes that has been cultivated to that. Other microbes are either uncultivable or lack proper conditions to grow in lab. Our task is to cultivate these microbes and investigate their antimicrobial activities. We perform the cultivation of environmental microorganisms inside droplets of about 100 picoliter. We generate them with our microfluidics setup. With a calculation of Poisson distribution, we achieve individual encapsulation of cells into separate droplets. These provide a nutritious environment for its growth, as this does not have to compete with other cells. 
This high throughput technique enables simultaneous cultivation of millions of microbes. So the chance of enriching and isolating desirable microbial strains is much higher than with other methods. The microfluidic setup for picoliter droplet generation consists of a PDMS microfluidic chip, which we fabricate in-house, a microscope, a high-speed camera, a pressure pump by fluigen, and other accessories such as tubings and valves. Droplets are generated at the bisphasic intersection of fluorinated oil and the aqueous cell suspension. We control the flow rate of these two phases with the pressure pump. Depending on the flow rates, the droplets of different volumes are generated at a frequency higher than 1000 per second. For droplet generation, pressure pumps are preferred over syringe pumps in certain studies, especially those with higher generation volume as well as samples of cell suspension. After incubation for a given time, the environmental microbes are enriched in individual droplets. Next, we add reporter strength by a process called picoinjection. These reporter strands contain fluorescent genes, which allow us to further track their growth. After picoinjection, we cultivate a microbe from nature together with a reporter strand placed in the same droplet. The logic behind this co-incubation is that if the environmental strain is able to produce antimicrobials, the growth of reporter strain will be inhibited. We can make these conclusions based on the intensity of fluorescence in droplets. Finally, the droplets of interest are sorted using a combination of syringe pump and fluigen pressure pump. For the research, model dispersity and stability of droplets are crucial. They ensure that the correct stoichiometric ratio is achieved and minimize droplet merging. Droplet stability is no doubt the biggest challenge most of the time at the beginning of a study. Since we don't know the content of the environmental sample for sure, like the types of microbes, chemistry of the soil or groundwater, these all pose challenges for droplet stabilization. To stabilize the droplets, we incorporate surfactants in our oil phase. We use several surfactants in our lab. And d surf by Fluigen is one of our most effective solutions because it maintains high droplet stability even during prolonged incubation and barely interferes with the biology as it is biocompatible. A decent amount of time has to be spent for optimization using different types and concentration of surfactant to make sure we can get reliable results. So this is how microfluidics helps make advancements in the study of antibiotics. And that's just one story told. There are many possible applications for microfluidics. And if you have any questions regarding your research, let us be of use and find a unique solution for your next breakthrough. Take care and see you soon. Okay, before we get in, we need to take a corona test. Ah. Uh... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is <laughs> Okay.